In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to fix a Dodge Charger. The guy I bought it from, he said he was just driving it and then all of a sudden, bam, it just cut out on him. I'm really excited about this one, so let's fix it. Before we get started, I want you to just take a quick look at this car. It is gorgeous. She's got some dents in it, but this is stuff that's easily replaceable. We can go to a salvage yard, get in a whole nother one for like 45, 50 bucks, and that will boost the value of the car tremendously. But look at the color on this. It just looks amazing. The interior is virtually spotless. We got a few things we got to clean up, but other than that, it's just awesome looking. The hood has a slight dent in it, but I think I'm going to try to fix it first. All right, so let's... All right, now let's get in here and let's pop the hood. So this is the air intake manifold. We're gonna take this off. These are all 10 millimeter. Oh, oh it looks like it's actually, okay, we don't have to do anything. It's actually... We definitely need this thing. Next, we're just gonna be pulling up the hoses. This. This comes out relatively easy, as you just saw. 10 millimeter. Before we go any further, we're gonna cover up the intake. That way no debris or whatever is gonna go into the engine. Yeah, you can see the tensioner has been removed. Well, then you can see this guide right here. This guide should not be pulling apart like that. My guess so far is the tensioner just failed and then it threw everything all out of whack. If that's the case, the valves on these might actually be bent. But this head is actually very simple. It's pretty straightforward to just unbolt it, get it out. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to take the cover off. In order to do that, we have to remove this crankshaft pulley. It's a 21 millimeter. Uh, thankfully, the previous owner had already loosened it up for me. Thanks, dude. Next, we're going to use this claw. We're, we're going to put the screw back in, put this up against it, and then the claw will pull the pulley right off. Actually, you know what? I think there might be enough room to actually pry this off. Oh yeah, that saved a bunch of hassle. That's awesome. We can unscrew this pulley and this tensioner. No, it's actually 16. I'm actually really excited about this vehicle. When it's done, this thing is gonna be roaring. All right, and we got that off. The rest of these are all 10 millimeters. We do have one that's probably like a 16 millimeter. We'll do that one last. There we go. I left all the screws in place because once you start trying to figure out like, oh man, where does one screw go? It's better to just leave all the screws in there. So we're looking for the most obvious thing and the chain could have been stretched out. It could have, uh, the, the tensioner could have went bad. What we need to do is we need to take all the guides off. We need to put a new tensioner on there. There's something that I'm pretty certain that we're gonna need. We're probably gonna need to replace all the valves over there. Okay, so what we have here is a leak down tester. We're gonna take out the spark plugs, put this in its place. We're gonna force air into the cylinder. The valves have to be in the closed position. I'll show you what that means in a second. But first, we gotta remove all the spark plugs. that we're facing now is uh, we did a leak down test on the passenger side and on the driver side and every single one of them is leaking air now we have to rip this whole engine apart get to the valves and then replace them okay so we got this camshaft on we got these two camshafts off so we put them in little baggies so we know which side is which. The fuel line has to come off 
and then the rest of the air intake. There's a couple more bolts holding in the guides. We have to remove those bolts, actually. Okay. Got a fresh bag for the guides. Yeah, that's one. Got it. These down here are half inch. We'll pull those out. Next, we're gonna take a 15 millimeter and get these loose. Wow. Uh, probably never moved 10 years. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can take the head off with the exhaust manifold or you can unscrew the exhaust manifold from the head. I prefer to take off the exhaust manifold, separate it from the head. That way I can put a new gasket on for the exhaust manifold. It's extra work, but it will eliminate any future problems. Oh, look at this. We have a little uh, we got a ground connection here. A little half inch. Now that we got the ground separated, I'm just gonna put that bolt right back there. The bolts to the exhaust manifold are pretty simple to get to. Now we can pull the head off. Very good, very good. All right, see how every single one of these valves are sticking out like that? This should be flush like the other ones. That means that these are, uh, these are bent. The reason why this happens is that the piston comes in and this came out too early and smashed right into it. You can actually see where the valves were smashing right into the piston right over there and we'll have to replace oh yeah look at this this is the head this is the manifold gasket right here and here we have the oh and we have the head gasket right here you can see that this is all scratched up without that black material liquid can pass from one cylinder to another creating a bunch of white smoke all right, so the next step is we got all of our new valves. We're gonna be taking the old ones out using this tool. This tool comes with threaded rods. One of them has a little hole that goes like this, and you have these other pieces which connect to it like that. You wanna have these out nice and far from each other. So I got the 25 millimeter going on the spring. And then this side is going to rest on the opposite side. It's going to be putting pressure on the back side of the valve. We're going to turn this side until the spring gets compressed and we get to these little things that are holding the valve together. They're called the keepers. Once we compress the spring, you need a magnet. You need to grab these little metal things. Hopefully you can see that, that they're in focus. I'm going to put them in a bag. To save time, I'm going to use this man-made tool. Now we can simply grab the spring. There's a little plate here. You want to keep that together. Put it in a little bag. Now all you have to do is push on the valve and it comes right out. Once we remove every single valve, then we're going to clean the other side with a brush. So then we're just going to repeat that process throughout the whole head. Okay, now all the valves have been removed. What we're gonna do is flip this. All right, so now every valve has been removed. We're gonna be using this steel brush and cleaning off all the edges. When we put a new gasket on, it's gonna have a clean metal surface to put on. If you see any cracks, then the whole head is, is no good. This one looks okay. We're just gonna use a steel brush and just clean off the whole surface area. So this is the exhaust side. We're gonna clean this area off too. This 
side right here, this is where the air gets sucked in. This is also gonna get cleaned off. We're also gonna clean this edge right over here. That nice finish. All right, so we just cleaned off the head. It looks great. Now we're gonna put the valves in and then put all the springs and keepers back together. Now we're gonna flip this up and we're gonna put all the springs and keepers back on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the springs, we're gonna put them back on. That little metal disc that will go over it. Now we're gonna compress the spring using this tool again. Next, take a zip tie and some grease. Take that grease and put it on both sides of the keeper. Zip tie is now holding that keeper. And then you just go right on in. And women wonder why. Why are your hands so dirty? Oh, this is why. Now that the keepers are in place, let's go ahead and unwind it. Okay, and now we need to do that 11 more times. So I finished this head and then I moved on to the second one. Now both of them are ready to go back into the car. Before we can put the heads on, we need to prep this surface area for the new gasket. Also, I want to change out this knock sensor because it's just it's right there. Well, here's our first gasket. It's going to go right here. Second gasket. These are different colors, but that's okay. Now we're going to take the driver's side head and flip it on. So we're gonna put the head bolts back in. As long as these are not stretched out and they will look very, very stretched, you can reuse these. All right, we're gonna tighten down these head bolts. We're gonna do 55 pounds and then a 90 degree turn on each one. 55 pounds, we're using a torque wrench. It says right here, the foot pounds, pull it, make the adjustments, put it down. And as soon as you hear that click, you're good to go. Now we're gonna do one 90 degree turn. We're gonna take manifolds and go back on here and we'll slide our fuel injectors right in place. So there's a couple more head bolts we gotta put down in here. We got the exhaust manifold gasket. This is gonna go in between the head and the exhaust manifold. If your engine starts up and it sounds like a diesel engine, this thing probably needs to be replaced. All right, we're gonna take the gasket. We're gonna go in between the head and the exhaust manifold. A little tough to show you on camera, but once you look at it yourself, it's really simple stuff. So there's four more bolts underneath the manifold. I'm gonna do those right now. Now it's time to put the passenger head back in place. All right, so we're gonna put our rocker arms back on and then we're gonna put our camshafts on. The rocker arms have a little hole that goes right on the lifter.
Oh, looks like I forgot these three bolts that are in here. Gonna get them nice and snug. So we got a canopy here, it protects us from the sun, but apparently we've got a, uh, a creature. Oh, do not, don't you dare. He's a good boy. So we have the two camshafts and we have the two dots here. There needs to be seven links in between in between each dot. We can put these. And we need to add this little tensioner. Okay, we still have seven links in between. We're gonna go ahead and bolt this down. Now that we got the two camshafts back on, we're gonna take some oil and we're going to lubricate all these spots. And now we're gonna take these things that are holding the camshaft down and we're gonna put them back in. This one actually has a number on it. It says number one and it's pointing with an arrow. This direction is where it has to be facing. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now that we have all of them in place, we're gonna tighten all these bolts down to 12 Newton meters or 10 foot pounds. Okay, we've set our torque wrench to 12 newton meters. It's a little tough to see on camera. And then the order that you need to tighten these are one, two, three, four, five. And as soon as you hear that click, that's tight enough. So we have two sprockets. One has a bunch of windows on it. This one is gonna go on the driver side and this sprocket will go on the passenger side. Your timing chain is going to have two marks on it. The sprocket with all the windows, that's the one that's going to go on. All right, it's a little tough to see, but you can make out the dot is right in between those two. On the driver's side, you want to lower this down. So we got this sprocket in the 12 o'clock position, and we're holding it with this. Okay, from here, we're going to guide the chain back upward and over to the other head. You'll see the other timing chain we mark right here gonna match that little dot right there and now we have to just rotate the camshafts the bolts can get bolted back in and this is where you want it you want it in the 12 o'clock position it's weird down below you can see that this other timing mark it has to match and be pointing to this other timing mark over here so to hold the timing mark in its place I put a magnet right there all right now that we have the chain in position we have to tighten down these bolts to 20 foot pounds. Now we're going to go ahead and put the guides back on. These are going to be 16 foot pounds. In order to put the bolts in for the guides, these little caps have to come off. Mine are completely stripped out, so I just used some channel locks to get them off. Okay. While we're at it, we're just gonna put the other guide right in here. Okay, now we're gonna get that last guide put in. All right, all right, so this next step is critical. Making sure that the timing marks are in their exact location, both on the camshafts and on the crankshaft down below. So here's a diagram for the timing chain placement, exact locations where the chain and everything needs to be. Now we're gonna press down on this guide, releasing the tensioner and putting tension on the belt. There we go. Now we're gonna rotate the crankshaft clockwise using a 21 millimeter. You wanna go around, you wanna go around at least two rotations. All right, we're gonna put the gasket back on. Tightening these up to 20 foot pounds. Now we're gonna put the camshaft sensor back in. Our coolant temperature sensor. Use a 19 millimeter, nothing crazy tight. Time for the pulleys. 
half inch or a 13 millimeter. Good. Belt tensioner. Now for the crankshaft pulley. So this crankshaft actually has to be tightened down as pretty much as tight as you can get it. Okay, now we're gonna put the serpentine belt back on. Pause the video, look at this diagram, and that will show you the path of the, of the serpentine belt. Once you have the belt ready, you simply put, simply take a 3 8 socket, and you stick it in there, and you push downward, all the way down. Then you can slip that on. All right, we got our serpentine belt on there. We're feeling around all the edges. Everything feels nice and smooth. Go ahead, put our fan back in here. Now we're gonna plug in our coolant. Put the covers back in. If you ever have bad ground connections, It'll have like faulty wire, faulty readings. All right, this is where we make all of our electrical connections. These cables are really nice because they only go in one spot. All the wires are shaped to go exactly where they need to go. Now we're going to put our air intake manifold on. So there's a few more tubes back here and the size of them can only go in one place. Makes it nice and easy. We have a few more connections. The green one goes to this sensor up here. Blue one goes to the throttle body. These two are ground connections and we're gonna attach it to one of the ground screws of the head right over here. Lastly, we're gonna put the air intake on. One more connection over here. And then these other two connectors these are really nice because they only fit in one spot. And then we'll just take these and that'll keep the wires from getting, making contact with anything. And then right here. All right guys, this is moment of truth. Let's go ahead and start her up. Yes. All right, so we got no engine codes. That's fantastic. She's idling beautifully. All right guys, so there you have it. The Dodge Charger is alive. If you found this video to be helpful, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and always remember that Jesus Christ loves you and only he can solve your biggest problem. What do you got to say? You gonna say something? <laughs>